how the sport has changed in just 30 years. And much of that change is attributed to the arrival of a certain young Austrian by the name of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I remember seeing him for the first time and being astonished at how enormous he was. And simultaneously, he was self-evidently completely charismatic and stood out in a really remarkable way. He just had, you know, that combination of size and shape and also charisma on stage that made him actually unbeatable in competitions. Schwarzenegger chalked up four more wins in 71, 72, 73, and 74. Then, as chronicled by the book and documentary Pumping Iron, he won the 1975 Mr. Olympia held in South Africa, giving him an unprecedented sixth consecutive title, a record at the time. Well, up until the Pumping Iron first book came out, and then the film, bodybuilding was basically, what they say, in the closet. Bodybuilding had been around for the whole century before Arnold Schwarzenegger and had not made it big. And we rigidly stuck to the idea that Arnold could be a star. Arnold not only became a star, but the sport of bodybuilding was thrust into the public consciousness, helping legitimize the sport. Arnold, of course, was the leading athlete in the sport, a leading image, out front image. But at the same time, uh, Joe Weider and the Weider Publishing Empire has supported uh, the sport of bodybuilding and been the leader in the publishing field worldwide. The last three decades have seen the sport experience unprecedented growth. When we first started more like a shadow sport. It was like a freak show. And it's not a freak show anymore, the fact that everybody in the mainstream got involved. As a result, many of these athletes are able to support themselves and their families while training full time. Who calls your favorite? My day starts at 4.30 in the morning when I wake up and do my cardio at home. And then at 6 o'clock I have my first meal. Then I go to bed, and from there on, every three hours I eat. A professional since 1992, Flex Wheeler's training regimen and eating and sleeping habits focus on enabling him to do one thing, and that is to excel at the highest level of competition. I leave about 10 o'clock uh, from my house and drive an hour to the gym. I train for about an hour, hour and a half, do another session of cardio there, um, drive back home with another hour, and... Um, um, Eat again, go to sleep, wake up, leave about 7 o'clock, drive back down another hour, train uh, for an hour and a half to two hours of cardio. The reason for putting himself through a daily routine like that is very simple. Flex Wheeler wants to be the greatest bodybuilder that ever lived and be proud of it. When I retire, then I can say, I've won X many titles. You know, I can show this to my kids and my grandkids. But there is a downside, especially for a family man. If I come home from the gym and my son uh, wants to go out and play and I'm exhausted and I can only play with him for a while and he doesn't understand, okay, you know, why daddy won't play anymore, that kills me. You know, my wife, if she wants to go to the movies, you know, I can't go to the movies with her or anything like that because we have this three hour window uh, that we have to live by. Stuff like that, you know, having to get up uh, and doing cardio at four o'clock in the morning, you know, not being able to sleep in, you know, just things that people normally take for granted. I don't have a weekend. I work out six days a week four days straight, one day off, and then the next day, so I don't know what a weekend is. I don't know what a breakfast or a lunch or a dinner is. I eat every three hours, so I don't live under the norm. Flex Wheeler has been bodybuilding since he was in high school. At the age of 33, all of his sacrifice and preparation have brought him to his prime. He is one of 17 waiting backstage, including Chris. Waist down, let's go, line up, fellas. It's time for pre-judging at the Arnold Classic, and the athlete's mental preparation must be as faultless as their bodies. It's more a mental preparation than it is a physical now. You've done what all you can do, but the mind is so strong, it can ruin the physique. Mental. It's a tough job somebody's got to get, you know? 
To show the muscle they've worked so hard to achieve, athletes make sure their bodies glisten to catch the light just right. Bodybuilders put oil on the bodies to, to enhance the definition, but all they need is a light smattering. You put too much oil on it, you look watery and soft. Backstage, an essential part of final preparations is the pump up before going on. It's important in a physical sense, but more in a psychological sense. If they haven't got the, it right, say, two or three days out from the contest, no amount of pumping is going to get it right. It's just that final little, you know, touch to say, yeah, the muscles are working, they're here, and just to get the blood flowing a little bit. The greatest bodies on earth finally take the stage for prejudging where most of the points are earned. Competitor number 15, Mario Baccanini. At every bodybuilding contest, impressing the judges is every competitor's objective. So what exactly are the judges looking for? Overall, the judges are looking for balanced, hard, defined development. You don't want to see a guy who's got a massive arms and chest with spindly legs. That's not going to work. Then you take into account the degree of muscular development he's got and the hardness, which is brought about basically by depleting the fat levels to as low as is, is possible, so that you get the definition and the separation between each muscle group. The athletes go through a compulsory routine where they flex and squeeze their way through seven compulsory poses. The first pose is front double biceps. Then, front lat spread. Side chest. Then, they turn around and do rear double bicep. Rear lat spread to show off their back muscles. Turn to the side again. Do a side tricep. Then, the final shot is called abdominal and thighs, where they put the hands behind their heads and flex their thighs and abs. Any weaknesses that somebody's trying to hide is going to be exposed in one of those seven poses. So, that is almost the contest. In the center, Jason Arts. On one side, Deji Dawadu. The athletes are called out in groups of three for the comparison round. The stress level increases as the judges ask Flex and Chris to stand side by side. You're standing there in your underpants in front of 5,000 people. It's, it's you that's being judged, your very being, your very shell that you, 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 you're standing. It's not your performance as, you know, you're throwing darts or something or throwing a javelin. It's you. So if a guy hasn't got it together mentally, that can be very intimidating to him. Thank you very much. At the end of the pre-judging round, Flex Wheeler is in first place, 10 points ahead of his friend Chris Cormier, who's in second. The athletes have a short time to rest, as the finals won't be until the evening. Flex has to be at the top of his game to stay ahead of the pack and be named the greatest body.